small enchantress update where after some playtesting, I think commune with spirits is better than oath of Nyssa. It just like is never going to brick unless you reveal exactly four scions. I guess four scions slash commune to spirits. Very hard to brick with it. And then I was worried about commune with spirits not being an enchantment. That was kind of the biggest thing over Oath of Nyssa. Is like it's not an enchantment. So if you have your enchantresses in play, um, if you have your enchantresses in play, then you don't get to draw a card. But you just you just find an enchantment off of it. I think my logic there was pretty flawed. You just find an enchantment off of it and. I've been really liking it. It digs, it digs really deep for Dixos. Doesn't dig for Scion as hard, but I've been liking this card a lot. Um, I also tried Eidolon, the uh, Blossoms, and didn't like that one so much. Two two split. I think Commune is better. You can play the first Oath of Nissa. I just think Commune is better for the most part. So let, let's get a poll going. Would you rather see um, the uh, Amalia or Enchantress? Double Sithis, triple Sithis on the play against a Giganta deck. We can keep this, I think. Kaldas Threshold's reprints. Okay, that's huge deal for standard. Do you have the standard RCQ coming up? Could remove one card from existence. Which card would it be? Snapcaster Mage. Tarmogoyf. Liliana of the Veil. Vale. Young Pyromancer. Um. Try to think of just everybody's favorite cards. <laughs> I can't get to give any more. Just like <laughs> de facto favorite cards. Uh, I think I'm gonna take Sing to Weaver. Thought I had thought sees. <laughs> yeah, Electrolyze. <laughs> Arc like Phoenix. <laughs> Why block? Is the community immediately worse here? Uh, yeah. It is immediately worse here. It's been better for me in testing in general. But obviously, obviously they're not zero. It's not strictly better. Upgrade. Two mana deal five at sorcery speed. Goodbye, Shieldreds. Reveal a mount creature or planes from among top five into your hand. Two one. ETB sacrifice another creature. When you do destroy target non land permanent. Okay, that card rules. It's a vampire too. The tribal flames my set this. Two more where that came from. I also played a league with Nylea's presence, and I would not recommend <laughs> playing Nylea's presence. The Boros Convoke with actual mana base in standard. I don't know. I think Boros sucks in standard because it's like at least at least I just keep playing decks that are really good against it. But it's like if you don't have if they don't have like their really good curve outs, they just can't win. And then there's just like a ton of like sweepers and like combos that they can't really deal with either. I just I just haven't been very scared of Boros. Like I, I and I, I have just been playing like blue white control and squirming emergence. So maybe I've just been playing two decks that are really good against it, but I've also definitely like really been wanting to play decks that are good against it because I know that that deck is popular. But it's like like if you they, they, like the thing is like their best draws also just like lose to sweepers or lose to like squirming emergence on Atraxa. Get stubbed. Ow my my toe. I guess I'll uh, abundant growth my misty. Cast a couple Destiny Spinners. Probably not getting hit by Ragavan next turn. My Devotion... Uh, my Domain is only <laughs> one at the moment. It's okay. Doesn't need to be any higher. The cool 20 life, despite my opponent's... Were they on the, was I on the play? I must have been on the play this game. Yeah. <laughs> Harder <laughs> on the draw. Remember, for the graveyard's interesting. I agree that card's interesting. Could double block. It feels like I that I just don't have my like easy win con next turn in play. Like I don't know what they're really supposed to do. Yeah, they just concede. So I guess I have trample four. Six five trample for four with upsides. In this matchup, I want to bring in the seal of primordiums, and I haven't been bringing in purge. It's mostly just for bowmaster decks. 
don't think maybe some moons on the player okay but go down one spinner two communes I'd love to play this deck in the the challenge this weekend too. Oh, I can I can play the challenge this weekend because I'm queued for Dallas now. This Nykthos is looking so sick. His hands amazing. I got a six six flyer for four and one and no one in modern Karen. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> So if we could draw a land and go like turn two Scion into um into activate Nykthos for double Sanctum Weaver. Go Nair Sigil last weekend? I did, yeah. I played uh oh. Hoisted by Ragavan again. I played a squirming emergence. Often you untap with Weaver. Often enough for me to like playing four of these cards. So I think the thing about Weaver that's cool is if you untap, you win the game, like, every single time. You can give it Hexproof with Scion, and if they kill it, you have Nykthos as, like, a backup mana engine. No, no. Oh, wait, wait, wait. That was the last RCQ? Oh, I didn't even know this was the last. That was... I thought there were more... There was one more week. <laughs> I didn't even know that was the last RCQ. Okay, so I'm gonna definitely cast this... Well, I can, because they're about to, like, cut me off domain pretty hard. Yeah, when is, when is the next RCQ season start? Next season is April 20th. Ooh, hell yeah. Okay, uh, Ragavan hitting me again. Very rude. Enchanters of Presence. They could guess that. They have, like, eight enchantments in their deck. Deck tech for your ZJ. Territorial Kavu over there. All right, I guess I'm just gonna cast a Sanctum Weaver and probably lose to my opponent having hit Seal of Primordium off of the Ragavan. John Alter Roots. 45. So you're at 68. I would imagine you don't want the fourth feasting troll king. Maybe you don't. It seems so nice in the list. I'm just going to go ahead and assume your math is right, but it, it looks like it's pretty right. Uh, this looks awesome. I really like it. I really like it. Um, I'd really like to see you play the fourth finale. You may, it may be right to just go like fourth finale, <laughs> fourth troll king, four profane tutors, and like plus like plus like four more lands. That that could just be correct. Maybe too many cards. Corpse explosion as additional cost to cast about exile creature in graveyard deals damage to to exile cards to each creature in planeswalker. That's a cool card. Wait, did Ragavan hit Leyline Binding? <laughs> Ragavan did hit Leyline Binding. Okay, I'm I'm moving on. <laughs> moving on to the game. I guess I don't know. I guess I could have gone seal, but they just Ragavan hitting <laughs> two super relevant cards on the play. Just crushing game three. They have such a good matchup on the play. Looks sick. I don't know. This this could just be very good as is. I could see I could see not playing Gilded Goose. Uh, but then your troll kings are a lot worse, I suppose. You don't have to play Goose. You could go like minus four Geese and then up a Finale, up a Troll King and then play like 64 or 66 cards. But it looks good. Looks 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 cool. I may, I'm, I'm hoping to play a, a Lamplight Phoenix deck at some point this week. Get his hand rules. Do the math behind going past 60 super, super open to moving to 70 over 68. Yeah, yeah. The, the number is not super concrete. As long as, as, as long as you have enough to like mill yourself and then mill them. Uh, after you combo, you, you, you're like just good to go. I think the number is like 34 collect evidences of four. Or you will block because I have another one. Ah, 
I don't know, maybe not. Just make him kill it. I guess if they're gonna kill it, they're gonna kill it pre-combat. That's what they did last time. Okay, so now we're not blocking for sure. <laughs> Fun the growth. Never equip creature, deals common damage to the player. Look at that many cards to top of the library. XL non land card from among them, put the rest of the bomber in order. Pay without casting mana cost. Cool. I do like that line of that card. Didn't draw a land. So maybe we'll draw one off the Sanctum Weaver, but I gotta cast the Sanctum Weaver against an opponent who doesn't seem like they have a Lightning Bolt or Playline Binding. Not drawing, we didn't draw a land in like eight cards or something. Kind of sucks. Minus four goose, plus one troll finale. And yeah, yeah, and, and also maybe just going up on four finale, up to four troll king, and then play four profane tutor and like four more lands. Cause like, like, like I wonder, like, is, is plus four profane tutors and like plus two lands? To me, that would seem like more consistent than like any list without. Like, just, just minus six cards. So, I don't know. You know, if we remember the Yoran era, the, the cost of... The cost of playing a bunch of extra cards is not as high as some people make it out to be. That's the Destiny Spinner, maybe? Oh, they have Tribal Flames. So, I draw my land. I can only domain X equals three here, though. That's a great draw. So yeah, I'm just gonna, I guess maybe I should cast Seal. I don't know, that's fine not to. I'm gonna get a Triome. I'll do it after this. Yeah, with the three minute Snapcaster is not very interesting to me, to be honest. Not a good card. You got four cards in their hand over there. My left total is pretty high because of Sithis. Well, that's pretty scary. So I'm going to grab Katria Trium. Dafa doesn't really matter. So then I'm going to go two mana, Seal of Primordium, Nykthos, six Devotion, cast Leyline, cast Scion. I guess I could also Leyline Binding and have it be a little less obvious. I think I should just save the Binding for next turn. If we survive, and it's looking kind of likely we'll untap, we're in pretty good shape. Guess I'm just going to do this now so that their mana is much worse on their turn. I guess they could just fetch shock to their leisure at 32 life. At 11. Effectively at 15 if they don't have a binding for my ley line. Pick the poison would be a pretty funny card for them to have in their hand. Yeah, pretty cool to removal spell for my ley line, I guess. New get rock monster. Five mana, six four trample haze, deals common damage to a player. Sacrifice a creature that's settled at this turn. If you do, draw X cards, then put X lands where X is the sacrifice creature's power. That's awesome. Attacking with just territorial Kavu. Let's double block. If they top deck to Leyline Binding, it's not the end of the world. And I'm okay losing my Scion here. I just have another one in the hand. I don't want to die to double Tribal Flames or Tribal Flames Bolt. But I'm just going to untap with millions of mana. Okay. So I did get to untap. Cast Destiny Spinner first, kind of makes sense. Let's make everything un uncounterable. I 
pick it up stub pretty easy here. So, I, I mean, I guess they, they just don't have a removal spell, but... And I, and also protecting the Sanctum Weaver isn't that important. But, you know, I mean, the, the game's over. What, what can you say? <laughs> what can you say? This game is over. Um, I'm going to cast a Scion. Cast another Scion to play around Pick Your Poison. And then I'm going to save the binding for next turn probably cast seal is just over cool this like rules it said whenever you cast an artifact spell it'd be like way more enthused it's so getting grief scam oh only copies artifact tokens right. saga tokens i guess so I, I would assume my opponent's taking both of my domain cards here Good old grief bug. It's gonna main phase this. So they're randomly not playing deadly dispute. Uh, they're gonna. I imagine thoughts he's the scion, or maybe they just have Liliana in their hand. Where's a saga? Yeah, Sophie was playing this mono black. Where's a saga? Uh, Urza Saga Rack deck. I'm just, I'm just gonna play Destiny Spinner first. I think the fact that they didn't thought he's the Scion means that they just have an Edict. Yeah, so just play this first player on the Edict. They have two Edicts, they probably will get me here. Like, if they have if they have Grief Scam into uh, Urza Saga into Edict into Liliana, you know, it can be cooked. But they don't have that, they have just an Evoked Grief and then the Urza Saga here. And I'll cast the Sithis and see what they top deck. Garrus. I remember we, we, when we were playing this deck before, uh, the rack was two of our losses. Micromancer plus Spree. Eh, maybe. Micromancer is a pretty slow card. You mostly just want to be grabbing Ephemerate with it. <laughs> a fun thought. So they did make a Saga token, so they drew something. What is that something? A fatal push. Maybe I'll draw a scion. Guess I didn't need to play this out because of the rack. I drew an Urborg for turn. Why couldn't that have been the draw last turn? Let's surveil. Ding, 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 ding. I'm sure they have a lot of answers to this still in their deck, though, but they've already used one in their top decking also. So I'm down to eight, but then we're going to start gaining a bunch of life. I don't think I'm going to cast this ley line, though. It's it's not going <laughs> to... I'm not going to lose my, my ley line game one against mono black deck and then Take less damage against their rack and then save it to like as an enchantment to cast if I draw a Sithis or Enchantress's presence. Any creature is the best draw by a lot, and this is maybe the best creature to draw. Um I'm okay taking an extra damage in the rack so I can play a land next turn, maybe. Just gaining so much life. But now, now I'm just I have edict protection and seems like I'll be in good shape. So up a game against mono black saga scam whatever you call the, these decks um interested in purge interesting and in, interested in seal of primordium interested in potentially cutting the destiny spinners for the emerald to make room for all this and then just cutting the communes i think that makes sense oh i forgot about gigantha <laughs> Not sure if it's a good thing, but yeah, it's neat for sure. We'll just have to see what the rest of the spree cards look like. But Communion has been—it's been better. It's been like a little bit better than Oath of Nissa, but I—I I, was—you just break on Oath of Nissa like five percent of the time, which is a little too much. And then Commune. Commune, like I—I I really, really liking digging for 
an enchantress and digging for a Nykthos has been so nice. And it's just like a good consistency enabler or, or better consistency enabler and like what has already been just a super good deck. I mean, this hand rules. I, I love that this deck can just activate <laughs> Nykthos on, for five on turn two sometimes. Points on a mold of six on the play. Think Sunfall's modern playable? No. Play Supreme Verdict if you're a white sweeper deck. Play Damnation if you're black, probably. Just... Oh, I mean, Coffers can get away with five drops a bit better because they're playing Cabal Coffers and they have five man on turn four a lot of the time. You got another discard effect. They're pretty cooked if we get to resolve this. It's like the best card in the matchup by a lot. I guess we'll have to draw an enchantment at some point. Seems like a possible thing to do. Yeah, we did lose to it twice in I think was it the same I think it was the same league. Pretty tough. Okay. Come on, any enchantment. Take it. Gab, thank you for the raid. Hope you're doing well today. So we're going to lose that Sith this, but we're up playing a kind of updated build of the Enchantress Devotion Domain deck. Been playing Commune of Spirits over Oath of Nyssa. Doesn't brick almost ever. Oath of Nyssa brick like 5% of the time and digs better too. Although it's not an enchantment itself, but usually finds you an enchantment. So they've got one card left in their hand here. Do a bunch of like celestial purges and bindings that can deal with Liliana. Wow, what a right on time. Can cast Giganta this turn too if we don't find anything off this draw. Opponent's playing for a trophy right now. Nice that we've drawn a bunch of spells off the top. <laughs> I, I and not only spells, but like this turn have been like perfects. <laughs> and the, the perfects keep coming. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll... should probably not put Gigant into hand here, right? I can tell they're playing for trophy. There's a bot that tells you your opponent's, our opponent's record when we queue into them in the chat. Yeah, Holy Cow seems so fun. I'm going to cast the Binding just to Cantrip, I think. Let's see what our top card is. Graveyard that. Shout out Surveil Lands. <laughs> All right, then that'll probably do it for next turn. So I guess now I'm okay. Giganta into hand. Oh wait, sorry. I could just probably I could just cast that. Thought I had two less mana than I did. That's okay. Gonna win this game. I'm gonna cast a hexproof, vigilant, trample, lifelink, and recall the Aeon's Torn. Nice to get our revenge on the rack. We're losing to it twice in the same league last week. <laughs> well, I'll get my seven. Great, great six. Gonna put back this. Maybe in vile humans. Well. Or vile humans. Um, okay, against scales, I think I need to prioritize 
having some devotion, although it should be okay for me to grab like Stomping Ground and then the opposite Triumph next turn. I can still cast Leyline Binding and then I get to get the ball rolling a little bit. Yeah, I'll just go Temple Garden first. Draw a couple cards, get the ball. Um, can't quite go Presence into Binding next turn. I think that's okay. Okay, so this is two mana, two, three minutes. When this or and or one or more non-token creatures in the battlefield under control, if none of them, if if you vile them and draw a card, so also draws cards off of the plot mechanic. I don't like that it is awful if you don't draw Aether Vile. <laughs> I guess it's still two three minutes for two, but very good if you uh, have Aether Vile. Which is even less time. The, the big the sideboard's like one or two cards different, but the big thing is we're playing Commune with Spirits over Oath of Nyssa, which I think is a is a, after play testing off stream is an upgrade. Was well, not something I was sure was before. So they have Ballista. I'm I'm blocking this all day, dude. If you if if your whole turn is Ballista my Sithis, and like I get this like the Sithis is just a three for one. You know, either either you're gonna use your welding jar or you're gonna lose your Zabaz. I I'm I'm accepting this trade deal. <laughs> if I didn't have another enchantress in hand, maybe I I wouldn't. But trade deal accepted. A bit scared of Natty Haywire might. Maybe Haywire might off this too against me. But now I'm feeling like we're in a lot of trouble. Well played opponent. The two mana four four bail me out here with binding up. Seems pretty good. Hopefully they think I just forgot about Gigantha here. Seems good enough. Also makes Leyline a good tough deck. Fighting down Arcbound. No, I want to hold it up because, like, I, I can just I just get to block super well with my Scion, right? I get to block super well with the Scion, and then there's there's a chance that they are like, okay, I'm gonna just make one creature a five five to beat the Scion, not play around binding, even though my binding is kind of telegraphed because I didn't put Gigant in my hand. But I just get to hold the binding too for a while. I could draw an Enchantress, and they do get Haywire Might, which is good against my binding, of course. So an Enchantress is a good draw, a Leyline is a good draw, a Community of Spirits into one of these. Let's not forget this again. Can't Binding Nexus? Yeah, I could block the Nexus. Can never Binding Nexus. Yeah, I haven't seen the new Stoneforge art yet. So I block, I just don't have a good block. And putting a bunch of counters next was pretty bad. So thinking proactive binding on the Ravager. They're just not gonna going to do that probably, but we can also just like, I'm, I think I'm okay if they just go like, go all in on their Nexus at this point with this many resources. But they also just have Haywire Might off the Saga. So like casting, casting the binding, like guarantees that they're gonna get the Haywire Might there. You need a relevant top deck, pretty bad. That's a relevant top deck. Looked at the new Magda. Yeah, the new Magda is good. Yeah, we saw Ultek Batter Weaver. The card doesn't look that good to me at first glance. Touch of Spirit Realm isn't a good card, and you mostly can only play it if you're like comboing with it, like by flickering a Traxa. 
Wow, attack with everything. Okay. Um, first strike plays a pretty big factor into our blocks here. Let's go to blocks. Trying to first strike the Haywire Might, to me, makes the most sense here. And then... This will basically be down to 5-5, five, five, up to 6-6. Six, six. And if I cast two bindings, it's bigger. But if they put the counters on here, it's bad. I guess I block the Ravager to like just make them start sacking first. And they make them play into my bindings a bit better. I think this makes sense. Talk about final showdown. Is that the uh, the white kicker card? I, I like that card. I, I don't think it would be super good, but be fringe playable. Maybe I think it's also the kind of card that like maybe one day post image three or something, there's like a deck it fits better into that wants like combination dress down protection spell wrath. Like those are three really different things. I guess dress down and wrath are kind of both going to control deck. Saga bull haste boots. Oh no, let me see. haste off Urza Saga is incredibly big. I would, I'd love to see that. So what did they sack? They sacked the Ravager to itself. Okay. Counter on Zabaz. Okay. Yeah, probably a good standard card too. And I, I am thinking a lot about standard at the moment because I uh, have this turn. Okay, so now what? And yeah, I need to cast one. I need, so this was first strict damage. The Haywire Might is dead. Do I just binding construct? Take four. Binding Ballista, get ping for one down to nine, then take seven, but then there's no Ballista in play. I think, yeah, I think I just have to have no Ballista in play here. Oh, no, what is it? It's in... <laughs> okay, there it is. Equip creature gets plus... Oh, this, this card is insane. This card is insane. Holy shit, it's so much better than I thought it could be. Hammer's back. I don't know. This this card is ridiculous. You're only going to play one of them, but you die to this? I don't think so. I was going to respond to the cauldron activation. So they just ping me for one. Yeah, I mean, def definitely goes in hammer. I think you'll play standard on stream. I'll, I'll do it if I think the street, if like the content is interesting, right? If like if I have a cool brew or something. But also if I have a cool brew, maybe I want to keep it secret for the RC. So I'm not sure, but I'm open to it. So this is seven, eight. This card, this card's so good. Dude, so many modern cards came out today, or you know, not actually out yet. Yeah, I just have to. I just have to be able to reactively binding this cauldron. Drawing a Sithis would be nice. Okay, never mind. We have to do it now. We lived. <laughs> We're alive. Thank you, Gigantha. But still has a card in their hand. At the moment, it looks like we may live till next turn because they can't flying this. I guess they could just block if they flying. Roots of Speed exists. Yeah, sorry, this card is only good because it's fetchable off Saga. The, the only reason this card is like really exciting is you can fetch it off Urza Saga. But you fetch it off Urza Saga, then you give your Construct haste. And Ward 1 is really big, really big deal. Draw a Nykthos. Not a helpful card. Just sandbag it. I guess Leyline is our best top deck. Hopefully they don't have just Ballista. Wondering's pretty good. <laughs> now we don't even get to attack with the Leyline top deck. I have to actually save this for to draw an Enchantress. We've already surveil landed. Right, we also no problem. Uh -huh. Okay, probably going to go to game. Game two in a second. We can still win this game, I guess. But windows closing. 
have to have a good series of top decks. Like Sithis and uh, <laughs> one or two things. Okay, so my opponent has cast their wa their walking ballista. Guess that's fair. Get the hardened skills down first. Down a game. I'm gonna bring in the rest in peace and the seals. I think my first time playing this specific matchup. Um, I think I'm gonna go down. Just cut the spinner. Usually, when I just want to bring bring have like a slower, more controlling plan, I cut the sanctum weavers for the Emrakul. I feel like this is just the sideboard plan. Artifact Transmute. Sacrifice three artifact tokens with different names. Search your library for an artifact card and put it into play. Tap, make a blood clue or food. Card is so cool. It's also five fucking mana, but this card rules. Will unlikely be any good. Wait, this is three mana to activate? I thought it was just tap. So fun though. Yeah, obviously like very fun. Academy Manufacturer card. Yeah, more of an EDH card. Put it in my Magda deck. Yeah, similar to Forge Master. Also, like, what are you putting in play in the other Manufactor? Can we Manufactor as well? Puts Fortal. You you can just like use a trash for treasure portal into play. There's also like the four mana. There's a four mana card that puts it into play. I can never remember the name of. Okay, I like this hand. On the play against Hardened Scales. It's kind of interesting how we sequence this. I think that what I want to do is go Katria Triome into Forest Sanctum Weaver or Temple Garden Sanctum Weaver and then and then play Sithis and then play Utopia Sprawl then have Sanctum Weaver for three mana. Just knowing it's just not like not likely to die. Yeah, Shape a New. You could just Shape a New Portal to play. And Portal's also just not that good. It's okay. Gonna be too clunky for modern, almost almost certainly. Okay, great draw. You will live, Sanctum Weaver, you're going to live. <laughs> Sly Cox, thank you for the 16 months. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, yeah, this card is so expensive. Just just freaking cast portal to Fraxia <laughs> of Tron Lands or something. Okay, no ballista, thankfully. Rest in peace, we'll handle this Agatha Soul Cauldron. I cut lucky there. So I'm going to go Sithis into Sanctum Weaver for two green into Utopia Sprawl on white and to cast Rest in Peace with the ability to also cast a one mana green spell if I draw it. Got a lot of those in the deck. Not here though, but I'll take this Leyland of the Guild Pact for sure. I thought about making merch. I have thought about it. I, I may one day, and I may never one day. Who knows? When Esther was unemployed, she was kind of looking into it a little bit. And she's like, tried to do it as a project, and it was kind of daunting. And, you know, I'm a pretty busy guy. Yeah, this card is very good with Aether Vial, very bad when you don't have Aether Vial. I don't know. Outside to test someone else. I don't know. Maybe had some offers. I'm I'm open to it. You know, still open to it. Okay, it's fine. I'm just getting four. I could get a Doth of Triumph too. Yeah, let's just get. Oh no, I'm just gonna get full domain by casting this ley line of the guild pact. Duh. Whatever. What is happening right now? Okay. That green mana took like 30 seconds to load in. That line's so annoying to cast. So we could have cast a Scion on this turn. So we get to hold up a ley line binding. Not so bad. I'll just lead on my binding here on the hardened scales, I think. Hoping to chain some stuff together. Let's 
Tor of Bloodgast and Dredge. Uh, yeah, maybe there's maybe there's more to it, just Aether Vial. Yeah, I, I'm I'm open to that card being okay. So probably time to activate the Nykthos. I'm playing a lot of Scions this turn, huh? I haven't actually drawn too many communal spirits. I guess I've been boarding them out. You still board them out a bunch. It's like just the missing link. If we really had like one more really good like one mana green enchantment, this deck would be elevated even more. So only two scions should be okay. Gotta rest in peace and play. Don't have to harden scales and play anymore. Yeah, if you missed playing up with up the beanstalk, this may be the deck for you. Another enchantment like Utopia Sprawl. Yeah, yeah. Like if you got Wild Growth, this deck would be like you just played Wild Growth over the. I don't know. It wouldn't be one for one split, but yeah, Wild Growth would be a card that would push this deck a little bit more over the edge. But Communal Spirits is good, Oath of Ness is fine, but that is like, the that, that spot is the weakest spot. Okay, so they do get the Haywire Might, which uh, I guess could target my Leyline Binding, uh, but it's probably going to target my Leyline of the Guild Pacts, and then get Exiled. So will I double block this Construct? I'm, I'm at 27. Let's, let's take it. <laughs> Rargo sounds like a mage theory. Maybe. I, I think it would be a, a bad print into the format. Maybe. I just... Uh, I think you have a lot of Utopia Sprawl Wild Growth decks, but maybe maybe it'd be okay. Maybe I'm just a little too... Maybe just get, maybe just force a vigor of those gamers. Okay, so let's start off with a Surveil. Let's keep that card on top. And then I, I'm going to just attack with my Scions first. See if we can maybe bait them into using Haywire Might on this so I can I don't give them the scales. Yeah, Root Maze is modern legal. I, I've looked at every single green and white one mana enchantment over and over and over again for this deck. And two mana enchantments and three mana enchantments. I've looked at I've looked at every single one a lot. Okay, so they're gonna take eight. I'm not gonna gain any life. Until I start casting spells, let's set this again. So tap this. Can I cast the Enchantress's Presence before activating Nykthos? I can. I probably should just Nykthos first so I can cast other color, like more, more white spells, but easier. Because I might want to cast the Sithis. I also just have second Nykthos to play this turn. So this is uh, mana neutral with that second Nykthos, although they're just going to concede and go to game three. It's going to be a little bit tougher on the draw for game three. I, I like my sideboard plan. I'm going to go ahead and click submit and use the restroom real quick. We're back. It's me, your first aspiring spike. Okay, thank you for your patience. It's me, your first aspiring spike. Uh, I guess opponent uh in the tank here somehow 10 minutes on their clock i feel like that just hasn't gone that long i'm gonna click keep click keep hopefully draw an enchantress i consider it a wider angle camera setting people say stuff like wide angle camera setting and i like I, I understand each word individually but <laughs> look into it i don't usually put a lot of thought into it the camera settings. Yeah, the, the, the background is something I do put more effort into usually. It's been... I had, like, one big day where I, like, reorganized, like, the layout of everything. And I cleaned out the closet. I, like, had a bunch of stuff from when we moved in. Dingo got me this poster of the octopus. I do, I do need to... I need to get the sign like back in this corner. I need, to do, need to do a lot of stuff. I find the hats. I did. I did find the hats. I don't know if I'm gonna bring them back exactly. 
We do a queue. No, we're, we're mono queued. Getting a Stoneforge missing a time loss. Do you think it'll do anything without Cauldron? Me of Cryptic Coat. They grab an Agatha Soul Cauldron, so I'm glad I have this rest in peace. I don't know if I should should I double sprawl? Maybe I maybe I should save a sprawl for an enchantress, but I can also like cycle this better if I do. Let's double sprawl. I'll be happy enough if I draw an enchantress, you know. In Torpor or Legal and Standard Pioneer have any effect? I mean, yeah, but like, you already have these kind of effects in the in those formats anyways. I don't think it'll be a big, big difference. Taking one, down to 17. Drew Sithis. So I guess I'll just cycle main phase. Drew another Sithis, and then... Cast this, can't be haywire minded is really good, and then I'll get a surveil land end of turn and feeling okay. Punished for playing up the extra sprawl. I think I really only did it because I had the cycle land in my hand. I wanted it to be a bit easier to to cycle. As this guy's a neighbor of Wizards Lightning. I mean this card is just incredibly good. We'll see a lot of play in both Pioneer and Modern, probably. Or like I don't know if like this kind of strategy is good in Pioneer, but if it is, this card will be good. Card is like almost locked in for me as a four of in prowess. So they get Haywire Might, which is likely going to go after the rest in peace to unlock their uh, modular and their Agatha Soul Cauldron. But they won't get to Cauldron the Might, at least. They cast a Hardened Scales. They cast the Cauldron. Two cards left in their hand. Makes white mana, so probably colorless mana. Oh. Undoing. Scales like still play the Ozolith. Yeah, they, they play one usually. Satoru may be playable in Living End. I'm gonna cascade into it. <laughs> Asterix crab fine, okay. Sure, yeah. What, what is happening right now? Yeah, it's also a wizard. Like the, the, the card's just like as buffed as it possibly could have been. Oh, they're cast they're activating Haywire Might because they don't need to use the mana from Cauldron. And then they zero mana ballista so that they can kill my Sithis with the Zabaz. Or with Zabaz. Or with, with the construct token. Okay. Okay, we're gonna need to surveil into like Seal of Primordium, Wayland Binding, something like that. Need to take the hit so that uh, the Sithis gets to untap. We do get to yeah, we get the surveil, Leyland binding, seal of primordium. Uh, would I t keep a scion on top? Probably. Well, maybe it's a, maybe I shouldn't. Okay, there's a seal that was uh, on my wish list. Huge. Oh, they, they can kill their own Zabaz and then put two counters on the Construct and kill my Sithis. But then I can kill the Construct, maybe. Don't think I sequence differently. Killing the Cauldron is probably better still. We had 11 life against a base 2-2. Two -two. I guess we can Gigant in our hand this turn also. Cool game. Was that six minutes on the clock? I guess that's not going to be the most relevant. So activate two Ink Moth Nexuses so that the Construct can hit me for six. Best draw is Scion of Draco, followed by like Seal of Primordium, Enchantress, Sithis. Um, not a fucking one sub teeth.
bluff a Leyland Binding, I guess. They also didn't play a land last turn, so uh, two spells on hand. We draw two lands in a row. Yeah, we did. I mean, after the, after the Sith is drawn, draw step. Not that that's the biggest deal, but so many, so many live spells. Now we are dead on board. Always, always make scale players figure it out though, because it's either there, but make them figure it out. Make them figure it out. Yep, they did not figure it out. <laughs> we get another drill step. Not that I think we have. Maybe Scion, maybe Scion, but I just like chump blocking with Scion, right? But if they put the counters here, we were, we were dead on board. Okay, another land. Okay, 2 1. Take it. I think we probably just made a mistake by casting that extra Utopia Sprawl. Thought that we would have really got another card off of it. I guess we could have. Have the Synthesis in play maybe by using Sealed and Sandbagging Utopia Sprawl, then casting it. Okay, whatever. Just move on with our lives. Fact. Um. Let's keep. I think what I'm gonna do is lead on. I guess I just lead on Sprawl. Because obviously I I could want to commune with Spirits for land, but if I just draw a land next turn, then that'd be pretty sad that I grabbed a land. GG, Lorian. Dried Arbor with Satora. Okay, okay, Satora has a lot of implications then. Going to be a... Th Thunder Junction is going to be really, really impactful. So opponent's gone Grief Pitch Living End. Living End is a shitty matchup game one. Gets a lot better post-board. Any spree cards look interesting. The mechanic seems strong. The black one and the white one both seem modern playable. Black one more so, probably. Not super modern playable, but like, you know, fringy one G. Oh, this is Sodak, I just noticed. Cool. Um, I wouldn't want to land. Maybe just concede it to the grief. I don't know. Oh yeah, card works with undying. Okay, Satoru just triggers off everything, huh? New up to Beanstalk. Community of Spirits is the uh, new upgrade, which has been, I think, a good upgrade. How do you feel about saltiness when it comes to MTG? How do you try to avoid it if you do? I think saltiness can be fun or it can be toxic. I think you can like you can, you can have a balanced amount of salt. Um you know, you can be like, ah oh, god, god, I can't believe you had this, blah 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 blah. You're gonna turn you're gonna double grief me in living end. You can have fun with it. I think I think there's like a healthy amount of salt that you can have when you're playing. Um but you know, that's <laughs> There's definitely a line and there's definitely like a way to do it that is uh not as healthy. So obviously I'm just hoping my opponent doesn't <laughs> just really didn't get there. Otherwise we got a bunch of rusted pieces and stuff in the sideboard not gonna really like pretend that i can entertain winning this game if my opponent <laughs> casts a living in next turn so i'm not gonna play around it and saltiness should never your goal should never or you should never when you're being salty make your opponent feel bad should never be should never insult your opponent i guess i should have looked to see if they Real something. Arc Bounty, 34 months, Dragon's Dogma. Yeah, I actually, I, I installed it on my PlayStation yesterday. And then Esther spent like two hours in the character creator. And then uh, I spent like an hour in the character creator. And that was kind of it. <laughs> um, I'm not even sure if the hell. 
I don't. I, I have like no opinions on the game besides the character creators. Seems cool. The the game seems a little buggy. <laughs> so yeah, seems yeah seems a little rough around the edges, but we'll see. The combat the combat doesn't seem super fun to be honest. So spoiled by Dark Dark Souls. I'm gonna keep this. So Toro will fit perfectly in us for random animator. It's good with ephemerate. Like one thing is I, I the fact that it triggers off of Agorios doesn't matter at all. Cause you just want you just have won the game if you have uh Agorios. Yeah, I don't think it'll pick fit perfectly. I think it's worse than archaeologist probably. But it it could fit it. I mean, a few for my jobs to give me some smooth on my Xbox. You don't like the comment games up for you. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. I, I I like I like The Witcher 3 was a game that I played probably 10 hours of, 12 hours of, and like the combat was just to me so bad, so boring that I stopped playing. But triggers off evoking the elementals. Oh, okay. So it's, yeah, it's better. It, yeah, it's the Toro. Okay. So Toro's broken. <laughs> so Toro is broken. It's literally up to being stock. Holy shit. I guess that you can't play the multiples, doesn't trigger off binding. But does trigger off like ephemerate rebound. Yeah, it's it's a Toro's a two mana two three menace. If if when you when a creature enters the battlefield, is it just creature? If you didn't spend yeah, I think it's if it, when a creature enters the battlefield and you didn't spend mana to cast it, you draw a card. So many sick cards today. Gets bolted, gets pushed. Yeah, I mean, you can also just draw a card immediately a lot of the time. If you have it in, if you have a if you have ephemerated up and you're if you play if you wait till turn three, you go Satoro, so you against removal spell, you just ephemerate, draw, <laughs> draw on the rebound. Oh draw on Oh shit. Good for rest in peace. Take a sanctum weaver, I guess. Yeah, you can also cascade into it, and then if you cascade into another one, you draw a card. Wait, when you when you shardless, if you just if you just build it like up the beanstalk, you can just shardless agent into it, draw a card. I guess there's no violent outburst anymore. Card's really good. Mark, think of the twenty eight months. like this so I can binding if they have I guess there's no bad so if I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'd say they have a force negation. Because we'll just draw another rest in peace off the presence. Okay, just getting getting a concession we'll take. Go to game three. For this plea, play every color except breaks and no fury. I mean, if this card wasn't legendary, it would just be the new Oblivion stock. Although it's more fragile because it's a creature. It doesn't always draw a card on ETB either. The PowerPoint video is going to be pretty exciting, I think. I, I'm, I almost even want to just do a YouTube video today talking about all the spoilers because there's just so many. But does Satoru not work if none of them are cast or no man was spent to cast them? Or should it does work with the pitch elementals? Okay, play this. Maybe we can surveil a creature into the yard. Not that lucky. Maybe we can surveil it in a rested. Probably, assuming Sodic has the turn three cascade, probably just could not win. Should my should should they if I don't top deck rest in peace? Another hedge mage. Graveyard Riverwinder.
I haven't guessed at this. Four mana, six four trample with no downside. Well, it's got two upsides. But, I mean, that card isn't playable in any format, probably. <laughs> Unless, like, there's, like, some really sick desert synergies. All right, get living ended. Get racked. All right, try to finish with a 3-2. Wait, does does the card only trigger once a turn? I think like I don't know. some of us play limited. Yeah, I don't know, but like if you have like a green, green, green one four and a ten, ten, I think that that card's like super cool limited card. It just kind of, I guess it just demands a removal spell. It depends on what the format's like. You have Death Touchers in the format. It's just like you have Mana Wars in the format. Damigoth Titan, Black Green Hybrid, eleven ten, Action Block, Sack a Creature, Once Per Okay, so Toro's crazy. Odawara, Soaring City. <laughs> All the Leyline Bindings. It's like every every minute that passes, Satoru gets uh, more powerful. Brace yourself for my living in deck tech some of the next few days. Okay, deal. So we're against uh, Amulet, which is a much better matchup post board with all the Blood Moons and Seals. Not particularly good game one, especially with a slower hand like this, although their their draw also seems to be poor. I right, take the Sanctum Weaver. Kirin's been pretty good. If you're arguing that it still doesn't push for constructive, then why push it at all? I guess. I just, it just like, just, I want to see four mana spells be better in general. Like, I just want to see their stats, like, even the ones that are pushed for constructive, be bigger boys, bigger creatures, like four or five mana. But there, there, there's, there's some, some nuance, but I think that is a good one. Satoru Affinity. Yeah, Satoru just, like, it just works with everything. Ephemerate, Reanimation, a Aether Pile, Black like Crypto Coat. Uh, it's just zero mana creatures. No downsides. Only Satoru. You better be able to hold up the binding on there and turn with this wind so teeth. So now I can go activate Nyxthos, Leyline of the Guild Pact. Hold up the binding. Billions of mana for next turn. With Shieldred fit your criteria of well-designed four mana creature. Yeah, yeah, I think Shieldred rules. It, <laughs> it's like, just like super high impact dies to, dies to most things. It's a pretty good. It's kind of what I want to see on, on like four mana creatures. I mean, I'll just binding this later, I guess. Maybe you should binding now. All right, take your card and get out of here, opponent. I got, I get a card too. I <laughs> uh, can't kill them this turn either because we were on the Destiny Spinner Wind Con, but having two more bindings to like almost definitely survive till next turn is looking kind of nice. I'm gonna use this to cast the Leyline before I activate the Nyxthos. Then kinda out of gas. But I'll just cast I'll just cast two Scions and uh a Gigantha and hold up two two Leyline bindings. Which I get which I guess is kind of funny for me to have said kind of out of gas, but for this deck it is. <laughs>
I want to see Primeval Titan here. Nice. Oh, I drew my Lush Portico. I guess I'm punished for not tutoring it here. Need a Destiny Spinner to win. Got a bunch of them in the deck and likely a bunch of looks too. Pick up a Beseju. Makes sense. Switch to Thin. And I'm actually not going to cast the Binding now. I want to get my Surveil first, because if I draw a land, I did draw a land, I really want the Surveil first to make sure I have the best chance of getting there. Um, I mean, this is like mana positive cantrip that gains a life. Might as well keep it. It's like plus one mana, gain one life. Draw a card for zero, you know, for zero mana. Effectively, seems okay. And there's the best card possible. So we can maybe just let them concede to this. Do another binding, might as well. Remove all doubt. Alpha game against Titan is really big. So we get to bring in three moons and the seals. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm off the destiny spinners in this matchup. I'm also think I'm off the scion of Draco's. So maybe maybe I'd still play some destiny spinners. So like Emrakul two spinners. Emrakul's just so nice because it. I guess it's a little worse. Emrakul's nice because Sacred Weaver lives. Worse because we're blood mooning our Nykthos sometimes. But it's just important to have this against the ring. It's so like if they just chain the rings, it's so tough for me to like actually win win a game. Even if I'm doing everything. Oh, this deck did not be a meme so badly. I think this deck is not a meme. We were like 18 and 8 on stream with it last week. Trophied with it. I, I think this deck is good. Oh, this is 61. And oopsie doopsie 61. I say I need to be a minus one weaver. Um yeah, but no, this, this deck has been good. We keep on the strength of Seal of Primordium. I think I should probably be commune with spirits looking for Blood Moon. Okay, take sip this, I guess. Yeah, I guess we can just seal our own Blood Moon. Vesuva, my forest. Great pickup. Did I consider Saltic and Feminal? I mean, of course I considered a card that's been like in stock Enchantress since the <laughs> format's been around, or since the deck has been around, but the card sucks at the moment, I think, and you just, like, the Leyline Scion, I think, really compensates for what that card was doing for you in a really big way, if that makes sense. Have not wanted Solitary Confinement. Alright, nice to go seal into the Blood Moon. The Besage is not even really a big problem. Were they trying to main phase it and then like kind of end of turn? I guess that's what's happening. Funny growth is a big part of the Blood Moon plan, of course. So it was like Dryad. I feel like they would have just slammed the Dryad if they had it. I think they're just going to save you in the turn. Yeah. So let's get a Surveil going. Another copy of Enchantress's presence. Usually don't really want the third Enchantress effect. Certainly a sign of string. <laughs> it's a graveyard Enchantress presence with million mana. Splunking. Put Vesuva into play. Play for it. Six cards in their hand still. Plays Dryad. 
And then does not play land, so not clear that they have another land, I guess. Um, yeah, we can activate Nykthos for some mana if I do this first. I guess we're getting another Enchantress Presence, like it or not. Maybe I'll go tap for white and then Devotion to green. Just float a single white mana here, draw two. <laughs> draw four. Looking for a binding, I guess. Can't cast binding anymore, don't have only have four domain. Well, we'll draw three more cards and just see what happens. Pretty reasonable chance I'm dead, which sucks <laughs> after having pretty good draw. Plays a Valakit. Has a Titan. Probably dead. Game through in the play, I guess. I feel like they top deck this Valakit. Fourteen minus eight. Game three. On the play for game three, we'll take it. Down to sixty one this time. I guess the Valakit was in their hand, but I don't know, just any 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 two lands was lethal there, right? I think it was exactly lethal. Yeah, maybe if the other Valakit was in their hand, but they could also just... They still had a land drop to play, too. Okay, on the play. For the keep. Mostly wanting to surveil into... Utopia Sprawl, Abundant Growth, or... A Fetch Land? I'm going to lead on the Surveil Land. That's right, they could just pick up the Vesuva and then copy the Valakit. Points on the Mold of Six. Okay, so this was on my wish list. So I think what I do is I keep this on top, and then I go fetch Forest Sithis, and then I go Nykthos, or whatever land I draw, into uh, Utopia Sprawl on red, cast Blood Moon. Draw two cards, gain two life. Might as well just cast the Sprawl first, so that if we draw a fetch land, we can get another green source in play. There we go. Don't have a basic planes. We have got, you know... Sprawls and growths to make white mana underneath the moon. Your turn. Hoping to not get one ringed, I guess. It's like a dryad. Only one card left in their hand. Um, now all their stuff. They do have a. Now they've played second dryad after moon. These all tap for all colors. Previously, before this dryad came down, they only had one green source. Kind of weird how that works. Uh, I'm going to take Abundant Growth here over the Enchantress's presence. Then cast Communal Spirits, take another copy of Abundant Growth. Pass the turn. They have one card in their hand, um, so in order for them to cast a Primeval Titan next turn, they'll need land Primeval Titan. Uh, Primeval Titan is kind of doing its best Colossal Dreadmaw impression here. It's not the end of the world if that even happens. Opponent instead decides to do nothing with their turn, which I am happy with. So now our mana is looking pretty smooth. play Sanctum Weaver and Second Blood Moon this turn, but I, I will be playing Second Blood Moon this turn. Oh sorry, I, I can't sorry I can't play Enchantress Presence and and uh 
and second blood moon but i'm going to prioritize that play the sanctum weaver now i've got tons of mana Immercool will likely be cast not this next turn but the turn after one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven yeah not this turn but the turn after uh hardcast force of vigor could be a card that gets me don't need to be afraid of monsters in the closet and then i can even kill i guess i can just kill both of these Ooh, interesting. I guess. Oh, this is this is. I, I still have white man after this because I have the 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 growth. Just can't remember how the layers work. Like, does this tap for any color? It does. Okay. And I have full domain. Okay, it looks like we've won this match. So 3-2, only league on the day. I don't know, 3-2 is not a bad record. Um, I like this upgrade. I like this deck a lot. If I am going to play a challenge this weekend, which I want to, this is kind of my front runner, just because of how else I could spend, how much work we put into it. Uh, I just wanted to do like a league today with this update. Played a lot of stuff today. Had a good time. Opened an Urza Saga in this treasure chest. Happy. Um, I'm going to try to, after after I have lunch and I have a walk, I'm going to try to...